Well, everyone, it would seem tonight my candle is deciding to have a mind of its own. So if you see a lot of movement, it's the flame, the beautiful flame, just trying to burn my face off. And I'm telling you, I'm not breathing on it, and there's no draft in here, so I don't know. Candles, just flames are interesting. Well, I took a few days off of shooting these reviews out uh, the weekend, you know, but uh, I did watch a few scary movies, one of which I'm reviewing tonight, and I still don't know what I'm going to be for Halloween. I know Halloween is coming out around the corner, and I think two weeks or something like that so I hope uh, <laughs> I hope you're ahead of me in that department but um, I'm excited always excited for the the big day I guess you could call it Satan's day I don't know <laughs> but it is certainly the scariest spookiest night of the year um, tonight guys we are looking at a Boris Karloff movie titled The Black Castle. It came out in 1952. And please don't be misled like I was. If you go to, you know, a website like IMDb or something like that, you'll see the cover of The Black Castle and Boris Karloff will be right there on the front. Um he'll be looking all evil and like he's up to no good, but honestly, Boris Karloff is a good guy in this movie, and he isn't in it that much. So don't think this is going to be a Boris Karloff movie because he wasn't in it um, much of the film. In fact, the primary star of the film is Richard Green, who I haven't seen him in other movies, but I know that he went on to play Robin Hood in a television show. And... Also, um, Stephen McNally. I have never seen him in a film either, but I read about him because I thought he did a superb job. He primarily was in B films, and he was not really the star of the movie. He was always the supporting actor. But honestly, I thought Richard Green and um, Stephen McNally had great chemistry in this movie. Of course, McNally is the bad guy and Richard Green is the good guy. But I'll get into the plot here in a second. And Lon Chaney Jr. is in this movie. <laughs> you would think that a movie with Boris Karloff, oh, this was made by Universal, you know, Boris Karloff, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman Lon Chaney Jr. would be in just a blockbuster, basically. But Lon Chaney Jr. has a tiny, tiny role in the movie. Like, it was strange. And I'll get to why he wasn't in the film as much. But, um, so let's talk about the plot. The movie takes place in, I would say, late 1700s, early 1800s, um, in Austria. And um, Green's character is looking for his two friends who have gone missing. And they went missing when they went to the Black Castle. <laughs> and at this Black Castle is, of course, where um, McNally's character is. He plays the Count of the Castle. He's a real bad guy, real bad dude. Um, and basically, he's investigating the castle. He wants to find any clues as to where they are um, and he also wants to prove that because he figures of course the, that they're dead the count killed him but he wants proof as to um, to prove that the count killed them so he can go back to court because he himself is a a sir he is a knight in the Austrian court so he's looking for that evidence that's that is the plot. Um, of course, I'm not going to give too much away because there is a little bit of mystery in this movie. I would classify this movie as a period horror film. Not Maybe a little bit of a period drama, I could put it in there, but really it's a period horror film. A um, little bit of mystery, but that's how I would classify it. 
So what the what I love the most about this movie actually was the settings. Um, the castle is stunning. In fact, <clears throat> the um, the opening scene of the film it starts out. You see this massive black castle, and it's nighttime. I think there was lightning and thunder and I, the second I saw it, I was like, okay, this is going to be good. <laughs> this is going to be the scary movie that that I'm looking for. Because you really get that feeling of this is, this is a classic horror film. It's got all the elements. And it even has Boris Karloff in it. But I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I definitely recommend you to see it. But please don't expect to be scared. <laughs> um... It's not that type of, it's not a scary movie really, but it, it it's creepy, it's horror, um, it's just, the horror is dated, basically. Um, you're not going to be scared, however, I do want to note that the movie does deal with one of my biggest fears, which is being buried alive, and I thought that was one of the most interesting parts of the movie, which I believe they took from... Um, Edgar Allan Poe's tale, The Premature Burial. So there were elements of that, um, and that was spooky, creepy. You kind of get that Edgar Allan Poe feeling, perfect for Halloween. Um, let's see, what else? There is a love affair in this movie with the Countess and, and Green's character. Um, which which was good. You know, I was entertained with this movie. I would definitely call this enter an entertaining film. I, at no point was I bored. Um, I, I enjoyed it, basically. So, another scene that I do want to note. <laughs> um, they're just, you know, going around the castle. And there is a room with, with a massive alligator pit. And I thought that was another one of the coolest uh, scenes of the movie just seeing because you know you see in the cartoons um, around the castle you have the alligators but in this movie they they definitely showed that and it was pretty cool how they did it so as I said the pros are the setting the the interactions between um, Green and McNally were great uh, but the only con was just that it wasn't scary. <laughs> what, oh, actually, another con is just that Boris Karloff isn't in it much. I wish he was in it more. And Lon Chaney Jr., phew, man, I can't believe this guy had such a small role. He's like at the very bottom of the list and being in the movie. And apparently the re he, he plays a mute character, just a brute, uh, you know, uh, that type. And apparently, I read that um, the reason was because he was just super drunk on set, and he couldn't remember his lines. So they're like, all right, well, you're going to play this mute guy. And it's pretty sad to think about that, that he got to that point in his life. But um, anyways, see the movie. It was great. I'm going to have another review for you out tomorrow. And whoa. Have a good night, guys, and Halloween is coming. See ya.